Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Hope you guys are all doing well. So recently, I've been doing a lot of testing with the 27-inch 5K iMac for 2019. This uh, PC that we have over here actually has the 9900K Intel processor. That's an 8-core chip with 16 threads. Now, if you remember, last year, we tested out the baseline configuration of the iMac Pro, which also came with a 8-core Intel CPU. The only difference over here is this costs about almost half the price, $2,500 for this specific iMac configuration versus that uh, iMac starts at around $5,000 and beyond. What we're gonna do is a comparison between the uh, standard iMac that we have over here and the iMac Pro to give you guys an understanding on what you're getting with the iMac series and if it's even worth it, if you can get uh, the same performance, if not better, for half the price. So if you're interested, Let's get right into it. Now at face value, the 2019 5K 27 inch iMac is exactly the same in terms of looks as the previous generation 5K iMacs, pretty much since the first generation launch in 2014. Besides the sleek space gray finish that you get on the iMac Pro, from the front, it looks identical uh, to the standard iMac as you can see over here. Now at the back, the Pro version definitely has a lot more connectivity options, including two more USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 connections, which is definitely going to be handy. You can certainly add a USB Type-C hub uh, to your standard iMac, but that's obviously not included. You also have the big 10 gigabit Ethernet connection on the Pro versus a gigabit connection on the standard iMac, and the SD card reader on the Pro is also UHS-2 certified, so it'll support faster transfer speeds for larger capacity SD cards. And at the front, we also have a 1080p FaceTime camera versus 720p on the standard 5K iMac. Now, interestingly, we don't have the uh, T2 security chip on the new 2019 iMac. It is, however, in the Pro version, and that's going to help aid speed up image processing as well as some of the security parameters in terms of the Face ID system. And if you do a little bit of video editing and uh, getting into encoding H.265 codecs, uh, it's also going to speed up that process by a little bit as well. The funny thing is it's available on all the new uh, MacBooks as well as the Mac Mini, but unfortunately, for some reason, Apple didn't put the T2 chip in the new iMacs. Now, one real killer feature about the standard iMacs is that you can upgrade the RAM yourself and the uh, door to access uh, the uh, four SODIMM slots is located at the back. It's really simple to get a hold of and you can easily add 16 gigabytes for less than $100. We have the 8 gigabyte version over here specifically to save uh, some money and it comes uh, occupied with two 4 gigabyte sticks. Add 16 gigabytes, we have uh, 24 gigabytes for under under a hundred dollars and that's way cheaper than anything that Apple's going to give you that pretty much charges you an arm or a leg uh, to simply upgrade your RAM here you can do it yourself and this is not an option that's readily available on the iMac Pro you pretty much have to tear down the entire system to get access to the SODIMM slots now due to the fact that you can outfit the iMac Pro with a uh, 18 core CPU a Vega 64 graphics card and up to 256 gigabytes of DDR4 memory it is definitely going to need Need some major cooling hardware and that's why we have a dual fan slash dual heat seat configuration on the iMac Pros versus a uh, single fan configuration on the standard 5K iMacs. Based on our experience with the 8 core version of the 5K iMac, we didn't encounter any major overheating concerns or anything like that, but who knows what's going to happen in the future. Now the configuration that we have for our 2019 5K iMac is right over here. We have the upgraded Core i9 8 core version, specifically using the 9900K processor that can boost up to 5 gigahertz. We have 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory that's again easily upgradable. Now we also have the standard Radeon Pro 575X GPU. Now there's two main reasons why we didn't opt to go with the Vega 48 for another $450 or so. One is because we're going to be mostly doing uh, of photos and audio processing on this machine, a little bit of video editing. And even though the Vega 48 from a video editing standpoint will probably produce a shorter render output times, the difference for a Premiere Pro specifically, which I use, is gonna be marginally better, definitely not worth the $450 upgrade. And these days with Thunderbolt 3 eGPU solutions that are out there, I can easily grab a used AMD graphics card and uh, completely destroy the performance of a Vega 48 and even run 
rival what the iMac Pro can do from a graphics perspective. We also have the uh, standard Fusion Drive option, didn't opt for the SSD, even though the SSD, as you can see, is going to give you a significant boost in terms of read and write sequential performance. Uh, the read and write performance is still fairly good on the Fusion Drive, especially for general computing needs. And plus, uh, for my long-term storage as a scratch disk for video editing, I'm going to be using an external SSD drive via the Thunderbolt interface, and that should give me plenty faster speeds than the standard Fusion Drive, similar to what you're going to get on the built-in SSD that Apple charges you an arm and a leg for. So again, a little bit more flexibility and you're saving a big chunk of change when getting the Fusion Drive. Now, in terms of the displays themselves on both of these two machines, they're pretty much identical in terms of most parameters, resolution, brightness, contrast ratio, overall color accuracy, and there's really not a difference there. Now, in terms of audio, the iMac Pro does have better built-in speakers, but most people who are serious into audio are going to be using external studio speaker monitors anyways uh, to get the best sound possible and are probably never going to touch the uh, internal built-in speakers on these machines. Now moving on, let's talk about the benchmark results that we got out of both of these two. Now the iMac Pro from the baseline configuration comes with the Intel Xeon W2140B chip. That's an 8-core chip with 16 threads. It can turbo up to 4.2 gigahertz and that is certainly its Achilles heel compared to the 9900K that can boost up to 5 gigahertz and has similar parameters. And that's why if you take a look at our Cinebench R15 benchmark, we're getting slightly faster results due to that faster turbo speed on the 2019 iMac versus the Pro. And uh, same thing kind of goes with the Geekbench benchmark results in terms of the single core processing speed. You can see that we're getting around uh, just over 6,000 points on uh, the 2019 iMac versus 5,100 points on uh, the Pro. And the multi-core performance is uh, pretty much very similar around 31,000 points on both platforms. Now, just for fun, I also wanted to test out the uh, GPU performance. We have the Vega 56 as standard on the baseline iMac Pro versus we have the Radeon Pro 575X. And using the Unigen's Valley benchmarking tool, we set the resolution to 1080p ultra detail settings at 8x anti-aliasing. We got around 40.1 frames per second on the 575X versus the Vega 56 we got around 58.7 average frames per second. Now, as a gaming machine, uh, certainly with the 575X is definitely not optimal, but it is possible whether that's on OS 10 or using Windows 10 via boot camp and playing your uh, different Steam games and things like that. I played a little bit of Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, uh, high detail settings, and I was averaging around anywhere between high 50 to low 60 FPS, which is a decent level for a lower end uh, gaming PC. Again, if we wanted better graphical performance, I can easily uh, grab an eGPU solution, throw in a Vega 64 and completely destroy anything that the iMac Pro baseline configuration can do. Now, lastly, I just want to talk about the uh, processing performance for content creation specifically, starting with a Final Cut 10 4K a video project that had a length of about six minutes and 30 seconds. The export time for H.264 encoding was around two minutes and 11 seconds on the iMac Pro versus two minutes and 36 seconds on the standard 2019 iMac. Now, on Premiere Pro, rendering a similar 4K uh, 6 minutes and 41 second project took around uh, 3 minutes and 31 seconds on the iMac Pro versus 3 minutes and 18 seconds on the 2019 iMac, which was actually faster. Now, since Premiere Pro prioritizes single-threaded performance, and since we have a faster turbo speed on each of those cores of 5 gigahertz opposed to 4.2 gigahertz on the iMac Pro, uh, we are getting slightly faster render output times as a result of that and this is great news to me because I specifically use Premiere Pro for 99% of my editing and even though Final Cut is uh, going to have better overall software and hardware integration since it's an Apple specific product and it's highly optimized you're going to get more efficient uh, usage out of the GPU compared to Premiere Pro as well as a result you're always going to get faster render output times and a smoother editing experience as well. Now lastly I also want to test out the performance that you're going to get out of Logic, specifically bouncing out a audio file that has 
dozens of different tracks, instrumentations, as well as effects. Uh, that's about four and a half minutes. And uh, to bounce that track into a wave file took around 48 seconds on the iMac Pro versus around 51 seconds on the standard 5K iMac. So not a huge difference between the two and audio production is not going to be as CPU and certainly not really GPU intensive at all. And therefore the standard 5K iMac is probably going to be an excellent choice for pretty much most of the people working in audio production or music production nonetheless. Now based on our experience thus far in terms of a PC from Apple, I really think that this is probably one of the best options available right now. Uh, with the 8 core processor you're getting pretty much the same performance as you're going to get with the baseline configuration iMac Pro. You can obviously upgrade the SSD if you do want that. RAM is easily upgradable unlike the iMac Pro and you can add um, a Vega 48 uh, graphics card if you do want better uh, internal GPU performance. Uh, I'm going to go down the route of hooking up an eGPU for this machine and we're going to obviously upgrade uh, the uh, RAM a little bit further as well as add an external SSD drive via the Thunderbolt 3 interface. So this is going to be a very fast uh, PC from Apple and uh, we should be several several thousand dollars under the baseline configuration of the iMac Pro. So really this is the best deal that you're going to get from an all-in-one PC if you still want to go with Mac for software related reasons or interface related reasons. This is uh, certainly the best PC from a value perspective uh, thus far. Definitely love to hear your thoughts. Now what we're going to do is an ultimate setup for the 5K iMac for 2019. So definitely stay tuned for that video. Check out the description down below for more details and give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Make sure you have notifications turned on and we'll see you real soon. Take care and thanks for watching.